What's going on? What's up, my friends? Tomorrow, Wizard of the Coast is doing a ban announcement, a banned and restricted announcement. And I want to know what's going to get banned, right? That's, that's what the discussion is about. So first things first, let me grab the live stream link and we'll do our hellos. And then we'll talk about what's going down in the magical world, all right? Enjoy that spell mistake. There we go. Okay. That's good. Looks like the stream is running fine. So I'm going to have a little sip of my root beer here. Oh, bro. I forget. Sometimes the straw. Sometimes the straw I pick in Visistra. My brain is being scanned by aliens. Scanning. Scanning. That's funky, man. All right. Green screens are fun. So we got this set up properly. That means it's hello time. What's up? Error. Millmaster. Kenzaki. Uh, David, Micaeus, Sandwich, Sebastian, Ang, who else we got in here? Gossett, Dude Guy, Yamagoro, Shelton, Sandwich, Kenneth, Braden, who else? Who else we got in here? James Towns, what's up? Devin, hello. I think that I got everybody who said stuff here in the chat. So hello to you guys. Hello to anybody I missed. Hello to Assembled Lurkers. Hellos. And that's three different kinds of hellos. So that's the Triforce of hellos. What up, Doomblade? What up, Matthew? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? So tomorrow, we've got a band and announcement coming in, right? But who knows? Who knows what it's going to be? My guess is it's not really going to be much of anything because what are they going to what are they going to hit? Like they're not going to hit big things that are mucking up the scene because the big things that are mucking up the scene are mythics that they need to make money, right? Like when it comes down to this banning stuff, they don't do the commander bans, so that's right out, right? What, is it going to be something in Popper? Like, that affects that affects Popper players, obviously. But Popper is, like, on the furthest edges of, I don't know, my awareness when it comes to considering bands and stuff like that, right? So, you've got a situation where there's really just a few targets, ultimately. And... You, you look at the list of targets and you go, well, these, this is like a lineup of mythics, pretty much. And Wizards likes making money. So the culprits that are a problem are things like One Ring. You've got uh, Bowmasters. You've got Shieldred. So because of Beseech the Mirror as well, right? It basically is more copies of Shieldred. So there's a number of things, but... I don't know, man. Are they really gonna are they really gonna do anything to shield it in standard? I don't think so. I don't think so. They want to keep selling stuff, especially since standard boxes now have a lifespan of three years. Was its product to move, so I don't know. I don't know. And um when it comes to the one ring and the bowmaster, it's a it's a little bit more interesting because on one hand you have Forget it. They're not going to ban those because they're literally still selling more Lord of the Ring stuff. They haven't even put out the next version of the Lord of the Ring stuff and they're going to ban cards from it. So there's that position. And then there's the, well, they did tweak it for like alchemy arena play, right? Now I haven't fully looked into that because I don't play arena and I just haven't gotten around to seeing what's going on with that. But if it's just an alchemy tweak, as opposed to a ban, 
that doesn't necessarily mean anything because alchemy is now its own separate beast, right? It's a point of information to take into account, but how much does it actually matter? I don't know. Harris says, is the ring in enough decks yet? See, that's a great reference because in the in the last ban and restricted announcement, what what people were thinking was, what are you going to ban? And Wizards went, well, actually, we're unbanning a couple of cards. And it's like, we want to open the atmosphere up. We're not worried about any bannings. And so we're just going to spend most of the time talking about the Bowmasters and Ring, which are clearly a problem, but we're just going to talk about how they aren't a problem. And their justification for leaving the one ring alone is like probably my favorite not going to ban something justification ever. Like we've had a bunch of different justifications and usually a lot of the time it's just wizards is like, we just want to keep selling this stuff and we're never going to say that. Right. So it's, it's, it's funny to see how blatant they can be with that stuff, right? Where they're just like, okay, so in the past, We've said colorless cards like artifacts and stuff like that that can go into too many decks become a problem, right? They start to warp the meta. Everybody's playing them. They become auto-includes. That's a bad thing. We don't want everybody playing cards like that. Like if you go and read the ban announcement where they banned Bankbuster, that's like probably... It's, is it the most recent? It's definitely one of the most recent incidents of uh, an artifact that's too ubiquitous. Too many people are running it. So they went, uh, hey, time to ban this because everybody's using it and it goes into too many decks. And if it goes into too many decks too easy, that's a problem. So then with the one ring, they're like, we're not banning it because there's still more decks it can go in. And it's like, what? What? Look, man, we know it's powerful and we know it's a problem. But think about it. There's not as many decks playing it as we think could be playing it. And it's like, what does that mean? You already know it's a problem. And they're like, bro, we're still selling this. We're still selling this. It's ridiculous. So, I don't know, man. Like, are they legit going to ban... Are they going to ban anything from the Lord of the Rings set when we haven't even gotten the second wave and they're saying it's evergreen until like the end of 2024 bare minimum like Lord of the Rings is going to be around for over a year bro what are they really going to do what are they really going to do I don't know I don't know like my gut says they're not actually going to ban anything and they're just fingers crossed like they're just going yo so, so somebody over there was hitting the crack pipe and they're like, I got an idea, bro. What if instead of banning stuff, we just started like unbanning random things? Like, I think the reason everything's falling apart is because we've just been too heavy handed with bans and we just got to send a message that you don't got to worry about bans, guys. It's open season. So let's pick two other random cards to unban. It's probably just going to end up being some kind of rando unbanning or like Popper gets one card banned or some like some something to be like, guys, we got our eyes on the field. And then most of the time we'll probably be spent like the last one going, Bowmasters and One Ring are cool, bro. They're maybe not cool, but it's cool, bro. So we're cool. Anyways, bye. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. That's my guess. Millmaster, you think the ban is about Mirror? You think they're going to ban Beseech the Mirror? This quick? After uh, Wilds of Eldraine? You think so, eh? Right before right before we slide into the... I was going to say Rivals of Ixalan. No, it's, it's Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Right before we slide into that, huh, buddy? I mean, that could be the case. That could be the case. Who knows? Who knows? Earthbound, surely the three-year rotation will deal with this problem. The three-year thing was hilarious, where they just came out and were like, there's a problem, like standard, hey guys, we're going to fix it. So uh, anyway, standard is three years now. And it's like, what's this based on? A knee-jerk reaction from us. And it's like, it's a, it's a pretty big loss for them, where they had everybody in a non- in a, 
Um, not non-rotating, obviously, in a very rotating, in a very rotating format where it was constantly being shifted up. And it's like, yo, your stuff's only good for two years. And they blew it to the point where they're like, oh man, to try and like sell the stuff we have and maybe salvage this format, we got to start making it a three year. Like how long will it take before they try and put standard back to two years, right? Because that's got to be the plan. That's got to be the plan. It's like, did they sell all the Shieldred packs yet? If so, then they're banning Shieldred. That's how you look at it, for real. If they've sold all the Dominaria action or whatever set like a card's coming from, if they don't have it to get rid of anymore, then they don't care. And that's when the ban hammer action happens, which is why the Lord of the Rings stuff feels the least likely to me to get a hit, bro. So... Zigzag, do I think there'll be a ban in standard? I don't think there's going to be a ban in anything, but possibly some, some format that's not one of the more defining formats of Magic the Gathering. Although, I don't know. Can you even call standard a defining format of Magic the Gathering anymore? I don't, I, at one point, it was the defining format, right? Like, modern was there as well, but standard was like, it was the it child. It was the thing. And uh, boy, man, boy, did Wizards drive that into the ground and fast. Like the world was already falling apart. And then they decided, yo, what if we just leaned into that and obliterated standard? The most baffling choice, as far as I'm concerned, was the absurd idea to go with every standard set, we're going to release commander decks. And then they made suck bag commander decks to release alongside sets that what those decks weren't standard so if you were like somebody who wanted to go from arena and start playing standard or somebody new to magic you want to play standard you already are playing commander want to play standard pound sand all the way up your ass bro like that like wizards was just like no we don't sell that everybody's plays commander didn't you hear and then they're like why isn't anybody playing standard and buying all this stuff don't you guys know how this works doom blade super chat says what was the fire chat thing? They said they hung out at hot tub parties. Oh, that was like, um, that was Hasbro's fireside earning chat where they were, I think that was after, wasn't that after the failure of Magic 30? I can't remember the exact timeline, bro, but it was totally just like, uh, like softball questions and then Buddy talking about how he's hanging out in the hot tub or whatever drinking wine it, it i don't know man i don't know none of that stuff is for us right it's to try and keep the investors feeling like comfortable and sticking around you know that's that's what that feels like so psh, i don't know i don't know i don't own a single share of nothing so i don't have like corporations whispering into my ball bag going you're a sweet prince just stay where you are oh, stay hold the course diamond hands Hold the course. Hold the the throbbing course of uh, whatever. See, I don't know. Shares. <laughs> Jay, you think Atraxa is kind of nuts? I mean, a lot of stuff they make now is nuts. Let's be real. They make a lot of crazy cards. Maggie, Standard was king for a long, long time, but it died fast. It sure did. Wizards accelerated that. They thought that they could like consume standard onto arena and then they'd be like you love arena so you play it for real and digitally but they didn't make it easy to do digitally they're like and the like arena shows up and it's like yo i'm a mobile game like imagine you just pick some random noble game like dork spank and you're just like check it out i'm king dork and then you're just like okay i want to play dork spank in real life it's a free-to-play game that I put $5 into my whole life to get the proper dork skin, right? The uncircumcised dork skin. And so so <laughs> then you go into the store and you're like, hi, can I get some dork? Like, and they're like, yeah, can I play the standard dork? And it's like, you sure can. You want to build a dork deck? Okay, that'll be 800 bucks. And it's like, no, no, I just want like I just want to play like sta the standard format. Yeah, no, no your your mana base is like six hundred bucks, and then it's all mythics. You need a bunch of mythics, bro. So yeah, and then they're just like, no, like you know, I thought maybe like like a twenty dollar deck. Oh no, the twenty dollar decks? That's commander. What? 
Yeah, see how this is a standard set called Magic Standard 4000? Well, here's the commander decks that go with it. They're called Magic Standard 4000. What's the difference? Why aren't they, are they connected to the set? Yeah, somehow, because Wizards said they are. They're just high on crack. Nathan, Super Chat says, Evening Perp, I don't know anyone that plays standard and paper. Three communities I play Commander and Limited in, and a few people play Modern and Pioneer, but no standard. That's the wildest thing, bro is the amount of people that used I used to see playing standard and now you go out to the game store and it's people playing commander like straight up Friday night magic used to be like FNM was standard let's go let's compete let's play standard and then it turned into like it's commander time now right so it's just people hustling up into pods it's magic the gathering pod people time and that's it's a different terrain and ultimately wizards of the coast has realized that like competitive players like drive a lot of card sales and will buy a bunch of stuff right like commander players were like yo i need that tuna fish hammer to fuck up my buddy billy when i see him next month but standard players are, are like yo i need a play set of butt grabbers like for friday bro oh i need four anime butt grabbers for friday it's like the <laughs> Nathan, you're lord of the board. So yeah, it's it's a different vibe. It's a different vibe. Gianna, you want to be invited to those cocktail parties? Would you have anything to, to wear? That would be my concern. McKay Super Chat says, told my LGS I don't like Edge. And their response is, that's freshing? Wait, oh, ED, oh, hold on, I get it. That's, that's EDH. <laughs> I read that as a dang egg. And I'm sitting there going, what is that, egg? Ed? What? And then I'm just like, wait, that's just like G and H are beside each other on the keyboard. That's just EDH. So you told your LGS you don't like Commander and the response. We're like, that's refreshing. I like playing Magic one-on-one, -on -one, bro. That's my favorite way to play. That's it. That's it. Dork Spank sounds like a band name. It sure does. It sounds like it sounds like a cover band for like a real band called Doom Speak or something. You know, like. I don't know. <laughs> Doomblade! Uh, Super Chad says, In my opinion, if you're just playing Arena for Brawl, it's so much cheaper since you only need one card for each. It only cost me 50 bucks to complete the set on Arena, when in real life it costs like 150 That's true. You can get cheaper access to play with the cards on Arena. There are certain things that Arena... It, it is superior in, but there are other areas where it's not. Convenience arena's king like if you're like bro i don't want to wear pants and i don't want to listen to my opponent talk at all like at all i i want them to sit there mute and woodenly while i wail on them i don't want human interaction screw it i don't even want to be able to use their stupid little emoticon pictures that are going <laughs> i'm gonna spam a hedron <laughs> you know like <laughs> <laughs> so there's certain aspects of arena the convenience the convenience is hard to argue with bro 100 percent. but i keep the emotes on mute because and honestly i i haven't played arena recently i mean i did a few for a few days and then just went okay it's still not for me i quit for like a year or so and then for one day, I thought, yo, I can get back into this. This is cool. And then it quickly fell apart. And I went, oh, yeah, all the stuff they do with the arena drives me crazy. I'm going to take a break from this again. Maybe I'll come back in another year and see what it's like. But in the meantime, it's Chandelar. Chandelar, the modern version, has got a lot of magic cards in it. And I can play with that a fair bit. So I don't really need to worry so much about arena at this juncture. I did have fun playing arena with you guys like when we live streamed arena and hung out and stuff that was fun but ultimately arena it was it was bothering me it was bothering me when i was getting into it so i just went eh i'll play it when it's fun i have a ton of resources in it like i have enough to do tons and tons of drafts so maybe at some point i'll sit down and start hammering drafts but i ran into a bunch of technical issues and it really killed my enthusiasm for it. There wasn't a bunch of annoying opponents to deal with. I didn't run into that kind of stuff. It was really just the 
frustrations of dealing with Magic's system, trying to make it through a draft and actually play my games. Like, I literally just wanted to play, and it felt like a struggle. And I went, I don't need this, man. I don't need this. It's like if I went to make toast and there's just some fat guy who's like, what's up, bro? You got to punch me in the belly like King Hippo if you want to go make toast. And I'm like, like, he's not, you know, he's not even trying to fight because he wants it. He wants me to fist his stomach, but I still got to do it. And it wastes my time. And that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. <laughs> Fulgore knows what I'm saying, right? Fulgore, you, you know, you know. Remember when Standard was properly curated? Yeah, and there was different decks you could get into and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it wouldn't it wouldn't cost you automatically an arm and a leg. I do, I do recall that. Meg, you you were just like I'm done with Arena and Standard after they banned Oko. Well, I mean, I get it. Banning is annoying. At the same time, Oko was insane. It was insane. Of course, it's gonna get banned. It's too strong. It was crazy. Oko was like, yo, you ever heard of a one deck meta? Because I, I like pretty much invented it. <laughs> it's so, such a warped meta. It's crazy. I remember like I saw Oko, but they hadn't said what food tokens were. So I was just obsessed with what a food token was. And I didn't know the, like, I, I did not see that card and go, this is insanely bonkers, right? It's one of those cards where when you see it, you're like, all right. It's like Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp, when you looked at it, was just like, okay, this seems pretty good. And then when you played with it, you're like, Skull Clamp is so broken. This card is broken. This card is broken. Same thing happened with Umazawa's Jeep, man. Where it was like, uh, wait, you just play with it a bit and you're like, this card is so dumb. It's so dumb. So strong. Fulgore, you like EDH because there's no frequent bans? Well, fair enough. Having a having a format where stuff isn't uh, getting banned out of it all the time. Wizards wants all the formats to be rotating now. That's ultimately the strategy they went with. They went, you know what? Instead of having a balanced standard, they created fire design with the intentional aim of disrupting every format. So since like 2019, bare minimum, Wizards plan has been to force rotation into non-rotating formats like modern. That's why every Modern Horizon set will have cards that will impact Modern in a significant way, right? That is that is the intentional plan. It's, it's power creep to the tits, y'all. Jazz Super Chat says, all moved into my new place. Everything fits. You're happy. Oh, that's nice, bro. You know what? Moving sucks bad bag it's the worst you got to pack up all your crap and you got all this stuff and you're like is it even worth owning stuff is it even worth like just i'm getting a tent and i'm gonna go and live in the park yeah is it even worth having all this crap and then the fun the funnest part is when you go to move and you find like some box taped up from your previous move and you're like i'm throwing this out no we're no we're not opening this no we're not opening this box if we open this box we're gonna do that thing where we're just like oh look it's a minecraft torch remember how we used to use this one when the when the power went out we need to go to the bathroom and look the battery still has some flicker to it oh let's keep it and it'll be like we didn't need this stuff for the entire time we were in this place from our last place everything in this box is garbage it's garbage you know you just throw it. You just toss it. You just toss it. Jess, you found an old box with dirty dishes from 12 years ago? Well, that's gross. 12-year-old dirty dishes. What? <laughs> what? That's 12? Like a decade, bro? Come on, man. Come on. At that point, it's like the mummified, what? mummified food bits. Well, that's an easy throwaway, right? It's like, no, I kept it. <laughs> I just decided to keep it, man. Sentimental. You have so many dishes, it's insane. Yeah, you know what, bro? I remember having a whole bunch of dishes when I moved out. And then I noticed that because I'm a lazy sack of garbage, when it comes to dishes, I would like have them pile up 
like on the in the sink and then on the counter until I ran out of dishes. And then I'm like, well, now I got to wash dishes so that I have something to eat off of. But because I'm lazy about dishes, again, I would just wash the dishes I needed to eat mostly and maybe a couple more. But there would always just kind of be a bunch of dishes around. And I went, yo, why don't I just make it impossible for it to be like this? And I went to my system of two plates, two bowls, like two mugs, and like more utensils because I don't know, it just felt right. I didn't care that much about utensils and washing utensils. They're so small and fast. Like washing a fork or a spoon, it's not annoying like a stupid novelty mug where you're like, check it out. It's got fat jugs and it's like, ha ha, that's fun. Until you got to sit there and you got to take the rag and wipe the inside of each one. And if you don't, then you can see like the hot chocolate stains that are in there. So you know that the, the cup isn't clean. Like, come on, man. So yeah, I downsized all the amount of dishes I had to a minimal amount. And that worked out really well for me when I was like on my own. The ladies don't seem to care for that as much. They like to have more dishes on hand, but whatever. That's a system that worked for me rather than like, what do you need 15 plates for if you live alone? What, what are you going to do? Are you going to make like seven different meals and have them all at the same time with all plates at different parts of the tables and put on wigs and stuff and be like, I'm the guy from Split and I'm, I'm all these different people and have like a big like Italian style meal with yourself? You're not. So why would like just get rid of it? You don't need it, man. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need that. What if it was fine china? Oh yeah, because fine china is something that gets left unwashed in a box for 12 years. That's likely. He's just, he stored it like, I found it, this box of dirty china under the gold bars down in the wine cellar. Come on, man. Come on, man. Jess, oh, you've, you've, all right, you're already decided you have too many. I guess that's a side effect of moving. It helps you clarify, right? So you're giving them away. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. People can use them. Millmaster, because you have 14 cats, if you have 14 cats, it better be because you're cooking one of those cats and feeding it to the other cats because that's too many cats, man. That's too many cats. Always have 14 and then cook one and feed it to the other 13. <laughs> it's not illegal, officer. It's not illegal if they die of natural causes and it's natural that they can't breathe if I put them in these plastic bags. <laughs> Perfectly on theme for the Halloween season. Uh, Blue, what horror movies did we end up watching on Prime? Good question, buddy. Good question. Uh, let me try and recall what we watched on Prime. We watched... Um, the Mithrigan, that Megan movie, which was very middle of the road with a few all right moments, but mostly just bored, like mostly just bored. I did kind of like, I did like the way that they made her look though, in terms of like the, you have the real person, but then they did like the 3D overlay to her face or whatever the hell it is, the CGI. And so she has that uncanny, un, uncanny, uncanny valley kind of look to her, right? So I dug that. I thought that part was cool. And there was a few moments in the movie I was like, this is all right. Like, it wasn't terrible. I didn't feel the need to just go, oh, and walk away from it. We watched something, a bit of something. Um, I think it was called like hellacious or hilarious or like hell area, something like that. And it was like most of it was unwatchable. We tried skipping through and watching the rest because the first part was kind of fun. It was about shopping carts that like killer shopping carts that eat people and they had cut a shopping cart. So it had like a jaw. And at one point it came down and you're like, did that just come from the ceiling? But it was coming from the shelves. It was it was entertaining for what it was meant to be. Like it was just a cheap little piece of crap, but it was fun. It was fun. And we watched other things as well. Uh, we, we start watching The Expanse, which isn't horror, but, you know, we watch like four episodes of The Expanse, which is pretty cool. I don't really get into that much sci-fi, but I've actually been digging The Expanse. And, uh, you know, like the thing about sci-fi is depending on how it's done, it can be really boring. 
where like I find a lot of space battles to be super boring because you're flying around in space. There's nothing there. So you're just shooting at each other in an empty place with no walls and nothing to maneuver around a lot of the time. There may be asteroids or whatever, but space battles aren't exciting. And the asteroid stuff is way more exciting when it's used in like, a, we're using the hideout and escape from these guys. But the vastness of space, the aloneness, the scarcity of oxygen and water, playing that kind of stuff up, that's pretty interesting. That stuff can be really cool. So the expanse has got my attention. The whole like way they handled that hyperdrive stuff with the rickety ship almost coming apart from the pressure of it. And the fact that they have to inject milky caterpillar goo into neck holes is wild. It's like there's some crazy stuff going on there. We also watched Black Friday, which is a very forgettable movie. I've forgotten that we watched it multiple times already and was surprised to remember that I watched it. I went, it's fine, but it made like almost no impact on me at all. It was like, okay, hey, cool. There's Bruce Campbell. All right. Yeah, it's a Black Friday. There's zombies. All right. But ultimately, meh, didn't do that much for me. We watched Fast X as well. We've been like, we have been milking this. They have an Amazon Prime deal, 99 cents, right? Where you get it for one week. And that means you can, we used it to get deals on some Amazon stuff, right? That we're going to get anyways. And then we also, you get a Twitch Prime subscription. So I have a Twitch account, right? I have, I have an active Twitch account that you can actually, if you have like Amazon Prime, you can use your Twitch Prime sub on that, right? So that's like a couple of bucks right there. I think it's like two or three bucks, whatever it is. But it only cost a dollar to get that one week trial. And we, we got the account. Carly signed up and she's got subscribed to my Twitch account. So we paid a dollar, but we get two dollars and a week of free movies that we're milking. We're milking it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Kensuke, you use your Twitch Prime sub on me? Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate the extra effort that you go through to do that. Every once in a while, once that's built up enough, Twitch sends me a little email and goes, here, go, here you go, buddy. We're going to give you some money through PayPal for your Twitchness. And I'm like, this is dope, man. This is dope. Because Twitch is set up as my backup stream location. If anything goes wrong with YouTube and I can't stream here because something happened to the site or whatever else... I've got Twitch for streaming on as well. That's why you'll notice in the Discord, I always type live on YouTube. And you might be like, why is he still live on YouTube? He's only ever on YouTube if you've only been around recently. But I have done live streams on Twitch. I did live streams on DLive for a bit after PewDiePie lured a bunch of people over there. But that turned out to be a dead end. And so, yeah, I've streamed in different places, right? And the Twitch setup is just one where it's like, hey... If you've got that and you want to subscribe to the account, then that hooks me up. So I do like that. I do like that. Mel Massey replaced one set of old dishes with a better newer set of old dishes. I guess that's how it works with the fine china, right? News, you want to color code your plate to your mood while having comfort food? That is next level. If if using a different plate would change how I enjoyed my food, I would do that too, right? It sounds insane to me because like conceptually, it doesn't matter. Like if a plate is like beat up and dirty and looks like garbage, then yeah, I'm not going to be happy using that. But it's not like... If I have an orange plate for my food versus a red plate, that's going to impact my enjoyment of food. So whatever, man, you got an you got an extra level that you can enjoy stuff on, I guess. But for me, that's just like I, I cannot wrap my head around it every day. What do you mean? What's up with my straw? It's the Invisa straw, bro. What? See, it's gone. But now it appears out of nowhere. It's got stealth cloak, um, stealth cloak sci-fi <laughs> cloaking action. <laughs> Nathan, you like The Expanse? I'm not surprised, bro. You like a bunch of sci-fi. Now you're watching Perry Mason going old school. Speaking of old school, 
got into uh, Married with Children today. Introducing Carly to Married with Children. It is a fun show. It's just a whole bunch of smack talking and snarkiness. It's good. Quark, the shopping cart. It's not an entire horror movie. It's a horror short that's part of a longer movie. That's the deal. That's the deal. What up, No Name? How you doing, buddy? Kick is blowing up right now. What is that, a streaming site? There's like Rumble as well, isn't there? I'm just used to YouTube and hanging out with you guys and stuff. I like it here. I like it here. I don't know, running around all these new sites and... Uh, maybe my experience with DLive kind of made me more hesitant. But for now, I feel like YouTube and Twitch are the main places. YouTube is where I've got my main setup and Twitch is my backup. So I'm good for now. Cthulhu Reacher Season 2. Carly, like the... Guys, you hear Reacher, right? That's a reach around joke name, 100%. 100%. Kyle Driver Super Chat says, We as Magic players deserve more abs and legendaries. Do they not have that many, bro? I feel like they've made so many legendary creatures in the last few years that there must be a billion. But the fact that you're calling out for them and the fact that I can't instantly say no to you means there probably aren't enough, right? Nathan, yeah, you like YouTube because you got premium? Well, I like premium too. Because premium means that while you're watching my stuff, I get a tiny little bit. They, they care about how much premium time is spent watching my stuff. So anybody who's got that, I get a little, I get a little bit of rubbing money. That's what that's what that's what that is. Rubbing money. So yeah, Kyle, you gotta you gotta get you some more Abzan action, bro. 100 percent Sure, y'all ever saw Cheers? I saw a bit of Cheers. Frasier is, yeah, Frasier isn't a sequel. It's a spinoff, right? There's a difference. But yeah, it's totally, it was created off of Cheers. And Frasier is actually a really, really good sitcom. Like, genuinely, from start to finish. I didn't know that sitcoms could be good all the way till the end. Like, I didn't know that was possible. Because most sitcoms fall off. Like, for example, Third Rock from the Sun, where it was a lot of fun. And then season five, they were just like, yo, fuck it. And they just started driving the show straight off a cliff with their dumb nonsense. Audio, what do I rub with my money? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? You're just, you're, you're a plant here trying to figure out where I hide the money. You're here, we're on, you're here at the behest of my wife. To try and figure it out. I'm like the I'm like the Lucky Charms leprechaun with my pot of gold. And Carly's always after my Lucky Charms. So I'm not going to say out loud where I hide those little bit of money rubbins that I get from Nathan watching my stuff, bro. All right? <laughs> I ain't falling for this. This ain't my first day on the internet, bro. This ain't. This is you guys. You guys get emails from like Nigerian princesses and princes. Every, every scam email I get is just from Carly trying to figure out how to get my rubbing money, bro. That's what's going down. She's trying to figure it out. How do I get that rubbing money? Mill Master rub money. The cash mothers put under their son's pillows after they walk in on the... Wait. What's going on in your... What's going on at your house, bro? I... I if... Wait. Your wife goes in and gives your son money for tugging it, bro? I don't you think it's just going to encourage that behavior more? I mean, unless unless he's demonstrating some ambidextry and plate balance and spinning skills or something. And even then, like, your family's weird, bro. You people belong in the circus. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's all I'm going to say about that. The ending of Dinosaurs was sad. Doomblade, you're right. I remember the ending of it being sad. But, like, I tried to go back and watch Dinosaurs, and the first episode, it's, like, it's unwatchable, pretty much. Like, you can watch it to go check out the cool animatronic suits and stuff or whatever. Check out the cool dinosaur suits. That's cool. But the show itself, it's rough. It's rough. 
I don't know if it like gets better. And I just don't know, but a bunch of these shows that I'm going back and checking out, they're not holding up. You just like go, I can't. I have pleasant nostalgic memories of these, but there's so much garbage. And then some shows you go back, like Married with Children, and they deliver and you're like, okay, this is funny. This is holding up. Fausto, are you afraid of the dark? I never got into that. I don't I don't even I don't know what uh what horror stuff was my era. Oh, you know what else we tried watching off of, uh, I think it was actually off of Amazon Prime, was Unsolved Mysteries. And, like, the music is, like, banger for Unsolved Mysteries. And Robert Stack in his fucking trench coat and shit, that's badass. But, like, what's actually going on in the episode was crap. He was just like, we're going to show you some unsolved stuff and hope you can solve it. And I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> It wasn't very engaging. <laughs> Kyle Super Chat says, as of September, I read there are only 17. All right. Fair enough, bro. You want more variety than that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Juggle you don't like it when a character is inherently flawed. You're supposed to accept they don't learn and don't grow. Same mistakes over and over. I mean... On one hand, I agree with you. But on the other hand, people are like that, bro. Like, how many people do you know in life just learn from doing something wrong once and then they're just like, never make a mistake like that again? Or do you have to, like, learn a lesson a hard way and do it a bunch of times? Because I know I have, right? I don't know. I don't know. I think there's good and bad ways to do the kind of stuff you're talking about, you know? So yeah, I mean, the stuff was all right for its time. That's I think that's it, what it is. There's a bunch of stuff where it's like, it was good for its time in the world it was in. But now it's getting judged by the standards of today, right? Where you just go, okay, there's all this stuff to check out. And this just isn't good enough. Scorpa guys, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I say never going to make that mistake again as I proceed in making that same mistake. I feel like I've made the same mistake over and over and over, right? So that that's a human thing. That's a human thing. Doomblade, you want more psychopaths? The thing about psychopaths is they can be interesting, but at the same time, people can't connect with them really the same way because, you know, they're not they don't have the same range of like human emotions and shit. X-Files was all right. I never was like huge into it, but sometimes I found myself watching some X-Files. They had some crazy stuff in there. Mountain Jam, Unsolved Mysteries made you think aliens would come in your backyard. Maybe they got crazier. Maybe like the first season that we watched is why it was just kind of like, maybe, yeah, maybe they just went ham and I should go and check like, like something later. Because the episode I watched was just like, we don't know why this bitch died. This bitch got killed. We don't know why. We're hoping you'll call in and tell us. And I'm like, is this like, um, like America's Most Wanted or something like that? Is that what the deal was? And did it like, because if it just got crazier later, then maybe we'll go back and take a look. A monster could be lurking in your backyard. Well, it's funny when you're a kid and you're dumb, man. I remember being afraid of Jaws. I was worried Jaws would somehow get in my parents' waterbed. It's up on the second floor of a house. The hell was I thinking? <laughs> Millmaster, I saw the X-File movie. All I remember with the X-File movie is snow. Snow falling. That's it. That's it. Shoryo, oh, you're learning fucking Japanese, are you? You live in the you you live in the otaku life, VTuber. I gotta get one of those three D moosh moosh versions of myself. Hello, senpai. Do you want a nani my hentai? <laughs> 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 
They were supernatural episodes, usually showcasing someone making up a story. Okay, it must have changed. It must have changed. Jack says, over the years, Unsolved Mysteries has led to 260 solved mysteries, which isn't really a lot in the scope of things. I mean, 260 mysteries is a lot, actually, especially if they involve aliens and ghosts, right? If, imagine if they were just like, oh, we're here to talk about the unsolved mystery of Shelley's ghost. And then Shelley talks about the ghost. And then Robert Stack's like, nah, that ain't really lying, bitch. And then they're just like, mystery solved. <laughs> He just calls him a fucking liar. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that, man. I've been with some people who are telling these fucking stories. Like this chick, this chick, Carly brought this, this lady over and she was nice, but she was dumb. And like, I couldn't help myself at a certain point. I couldn't, I couldn't listen to what she was saying without saying something back where she's just like talking about how she was drowning in the pool and her fucking grandma saved her. Her grandma's spirit, like, after she was getting out of the pool, her grandma's spirit fucking pushed the water out of her lungs or whatever. And it's like, no, you just cough up water when you get out of the pool. Your grandma's ghost wasn't there. What are you talking about? Your grandma didn't save you from the pool. Ghosts aren't real. Your fucking poor grandma's not stuck hanging out with you everywhere in case you drown. Your grandma's not hanging out in the bathroom with you watching you take a dump in case she needs to dial 911 if you have burst of embolism in your brain like Elvis or whatever. You know? Like, your grandma's specter isn't fucking forced to watch you cry. Cry yourself to sleep. What are you talking about? You didn't push water out of your lungs, you maniac. You maniac. Clayton, bans incoming. You're getting banned from the bun part of the, of the um, what's it called? The buffet, bro. 100%. 100%. Unsolved Mysteries has been recut and remixed to cut out the Bigfoot stuff? What do you mean? They had Bigfoot stuff and they edited it out. Why? People love Bigfoot. Like Jess loves Bigfoot. When he's not busy collecting dirty dishes to box up for a decade so that they, I don't know, appreciate and value or taste like wine, uh, he is in, he is enjoying the finest in Bigfoot footage. Big footage, as they call it in the Bigfoot biz. <laughs> Big footage. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries had a lot of filler stories back in the day. Yeah, I, I feel like they probably started out talking about real crimes and turned into like a tabloid, you know? Sure, you'll have three actual windows. Have three little windows and have ninjas jump through those windows. Blump, blump, blump. <laughs> Jess, you're going to go download the Bigfoot episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. Why? There's no solutions there, bro. Bigfoot wasn't found there, so it's all useless. It's not going to help you. You think that you're going to find the Declaration of Independence that's going to lead you to the big footage that will lead you to Bigfoot? Hmm? What would you even do if you met Bigfoot, bro? What, offer him poutine? Bigfoot's going to be, like, in some cool part of the world. Like, you think he's here? Bigfoot's, like, in fucking Ibiza or some shit. Bigfoot's going to the fire festival. <laughs> Peterson, amazing stories. Amazing stories were awesome back in the day? Amazing stories, you mean? Yeah, I mean, you had you had limited avenues for your fantastical entertainment. You had like ridiculous tabloid newspapers, dumb television shows. And you'd think with the era of the internet that less people would believe in dumb shit, but that's not the case. People believe in all kinds of ridiculous nonsense, like ghosts and magic. And it's like, those aren't, no, come on me. Come on, bro. Let's be real. CPR, your LGS is selling individual Doctor Who booster packs for 30, no, for 40 Canadian. There are 32, 
they're like 32 or 33 before tax at the LGS I go to. Collector boosters are pricey as hell. They're pricey as hell. The Doctor Who stuff apparently is, uh, there's not going to be that much kicking around as well. So what are you going to do, man? That's this, this is, this is uh, magic now. Magic's expensive in Canada. So I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a lot to ask. That's a lot to ask. Amazing Stories is a comic. Ama oh, wait. Amazing, what? Was Amazing Stories a show? I never saw it. Never heard of it. But yeah, I mean, Amazon Prime is all right. It's all right. The stuff loads quickly and it's in nice high resolution. So there is that. There is that. There's been a bunch of interesting stuff to watch. But nothing like too amazing that would make me go, yo, we got to keep our Prime subscription to have access to this stuff, right? Sure, yo, no, there's no, there's no big, there ain't no Sam Squatches here. There ain't no Bigfoot here in Canada. It's intentionally, Bigfoot has left Canada to hide from Jess. He goes to Ibiza, bro. He goes to Ibiza. I mean, we've reached the point where, like, if Bigfoot did show up now, people would just not think it's real anyways, because you can deep fake anything you want, right? You can just take, like, Walter White and just be like, I'm going to put his face on Jesse from fucking Saved by the Bell, but when she's in that, when she's in that movie about strippers, what the hell is that one called again? Working girl? Call girl? Stripper girls? What the hell is it called? Showgirls. That's it. That's it. With Gina Gershon. <laughs> Peterson, yeah, showgirls. That's right, buddy. That's right. Mountain Jam, I don't think you can get all the... I don't think you can get all the cards from the Commander decks in the Doctor Who collector packs, right? Isn't it just the new stuff? I don't know. I don't 100 percent know. Yeah, the collector booster stuff is wild, right? I mean, they're juice to open. You can't deny that it's fun to open the craziness, but then the price tag that comes along with it is so high. Like, Wizards has really pushed the price point on stuff. Up, up, up. Yeah, McGraw, you were working in Seattle when Showgirls came out? Oh, are you one of the Showgirls? <laughs> yeah, the collector packs are just like alternate arts and stuff of the, the Doctors with the blue TARDIS background and then like extended versions, but... They don't always do, like, extended versions of every card, right? Ever heard of zombie strippers? Uh, we started watching a movie called Zombies vs. Strippers. And it didn't really... It didn't really go anywhere. You did get to see some titties, which is alright. But, like, the movie itself didn't really go anywhere. Hey, what up, Callaway? How you doing? Callaway Super Chat says, give me unclap, Papa? What? It's apparently how you say slap me, Daddy, in Finnish. What? Which is why well, I'm sure all the tinfoil hat brigade feels about big furry hominids. Callaway, what? You're making me think of weird old commercials with your nonsense. My brain is trying to catch up to <laughs> Well, at least you're not dead, buddy. How you, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, bro. All 
Uh, yo, King, nothing. I agree. I, I agree. If you're going to grab all the commander decks, then you have all the cards from the the whole set, right? So unless there's like some specific variants you really want, I guess if you're a super fan, it is fun to open boosters, but in terms of getting the cards, you'll literally have them all. I don't think there's any new unique cards that are actually in the boosters, so... Got a little bit of yoga in, stretch it out, stretch it out. Oh. So I definitely am curious to see what tomorrow's announcement is going to bring us. Are we going to have a banning? Are we going to have an unbanning? I think, I think it's probably not going to be impactful though, for real. I don't feel like some, I don't feel like some big change is coming, but who knows? We'll see. We'll see what Wizards is doing. I wasn't expecting them to launch back into standard as well, the same way they did. Callaway, you played flip and a rip it, and the most expensive card to be destroyed was about 20 bucks, eh? Oh, well, I don't like playing flip it and rip it. I don't like the whole, hey, some valuable card got destroyed. I'm like, I don't want to destroy valuable cards. I want to own them or exchange them for other objects of value. I want to take that card that was going to be destroyed and turn it into like pizza and a J or something, <laughs> you know? So I, I just can't, man. I don't have that big gambling nature. There's a lot of people who like that. A lot of people who think it's fun, right? People enjoy it. They enjoy doing it, the spectacle of it. But for me, nah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't. The feeling of, oh, you just destroyed a $20 card. Like, damn it. It's like, yo, let's take turns grabbing random like random things out of each other's wallets. Some will be worthless slips of paper. Some will be $20 bills, and we'll just set them on fire. And it's like, no, I'm not rich. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I don't want to get my kicks by doing that. Craig Craven, thanks for the little punchy fox sticker, bro. Pop, 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 pop. That's fun. That's fun. Kenneth, when you worked for an LGS, when Ammon Ket was hot, the owner played flip and rip it with the customers. They ripped a masterpiece thought sees. Oh, oh. Callaway Commander Masters packs. Oh, well, I mean, guess it's, I guess Wizards is happy somebody's getting some of that stuff. <laughs> Juggling, bro, I feel you. The, the secret layers with the basics, when they do something cool, like the pixel lands, it really sucks when you're like, uh, can I have enough for it? a dex worth, please? Or like half a dex worth? Like, can I get at least like 10 maybe? And it's like, no. For every one you want, you buy a full secret layer. It's like, oh, it's too big. It's too big an ask, you know? Too big. Yamagar, yeah, you bought a strip mine because you saw Joey Moss. Oh, Bad Boy Gaming, you saw him flip and rip one in the first video you ever saw, and you're like, now I'm going to own one. Fair enough. Fair enough. Buy what others destroy. Yeah. I mean, I have destroyed a number of valuable magic cards when I made like an entire wall of cards, but a lot of them weren't like super valuable at the time that I did it. They were just magic cards that I wanted the art off the cards from. So I cut the art out of the cards, but some of them later on became worthwhile. So like metal worker and stuff like that, you know, where he's like, oh, metal worker, a even doppelganger, bunch of reserve list stuff. Then now you're just going to go, Man, I chopped up a bunch of cards, and if I had them now, that's a that's a cry of a lot of Magic players. If I just had all these cards that are worth a bunch of money now, and it's like, yeah, that'd be great. It translates into, it'd be cool to have a bunch of stuff I could sell for a bunch of money right now, which just translates into, it'd be really cool to just have a bunch of money right now. And I agree, that would be dope. I wish that for all of us. I wish that for everyone here in the chat. The Somewhere right now, there's a shooting star. And I'm wishing upon it that our our 
collect the finances, we'll be shooting up high like a junkie with a belt around his arm. You feel me? That's what I wish for all of you. Like belt arm finance situations, guys. Train spotting, but with money instead of drugs. Jess only took you five and a half hours to move. That's not too bad, actually. It feels good, like, when you get it done and there's still part of the day left because it feels like an all-day endeavor, right? Uh, You only got to pay 600 bucks a month in rent. Yo, that's sweet, bro. That's sweet. I wish my rent was that cheap, man. Hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It is what it is. The universe giveth and it takes away. It giveth me the barks. You can see that. I haven't touched any of the cases yet. My sweet cases remain untouched and waiting. Because I got a rash in them. Because now they only show up every, like, what, three or four months or something? I don't remember. I don't remember the last time I was able to get some cases of these. So I got to make them last. The bottled stuff just ain't good enough. It ain't good enough. Man, I've been vibing on Minecraft. Every once in a while I get the itch for that game. And I've just been like playing it hardcore. Right now I'm deep, deep in the magic. I'm going to be doing some witchcraft at a certain point. But right now I'm doing that thomcraft with the magical wands and little nodes of magic energy out in the world. And I've just reached the point where I can like rip the power, the nodes of power from where they lay dormant in the earth and then transport them back to my base. And I'm going to do some kind of weird techno magic setup where I can drain the power from these magical nodes into computers. Into the, co hey kids, I'm a computer. Stop all the downloading. I'm going to download your magic. Jess, yeah, that's that's pretty hard to beat, bro. Josh, in BC, you can find barks in Vancouver in a few places, but never in the suburbs of the city. That's pretty much what I would expect, right? Like, there's only so much of it available, so they're going to give it to, like, bigger centers first, and we just get the trickle down. I've been dealing with a barks can drought for, like, years now. The pandemic caused them to be impossible to get for a year and a half. And when they came back originally, I foolishly thought that they were back for good. And then we had another big gap. And then when they came back again, I foolishly thought they were back for good. And now I don't think they're back for good. I fearfully think we'll never get them again. So as a result, I'm going to slow roll drinking my Barks root beers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag this out. I'm going to appreciate the most the most I can Callaway you've you've been a wandering man eh living with degenerate hippies on the beach <laughs> being a carny Maggie nope I haven't played Blightfall uh right now I'm playing Horizon Infinity I'm playing Feed the Beast Horizon Infinity I like the old mod packs that I know from like a fucking decade ago or whatever right and there's certain there's a few mods that i've never really got too deep into the one that i the one that i've always wanted to but never have done never ever got to it because i just ended up stopping playing before i got to that goal was fighting uh, there's a couple of gods i want to slay and uh yeah i never ended up fighting them there's there's like these little hobgoblins that roam the world and you can basically force them into servitude like you can leash them up and force them to mine and dig for you and stuff and then you can also build like a like a false idol of yourself and you can force the hobgoblins trick them into worshiping you like a god and then uh like you gain power from that but if you do it too much then the hobgoblin gods get angry and they come down and they go what are you doing why are you stealing our followers worship what and they attack you and then you can kill them and get their gear. 
So I've never done that. And that's something that's on my list of things to do. That's like, uh, that's when you become a witch. I'm pretty sure it's part of the witch one. Cthulhu, if things get bad enough for wizards, will they touch the reserve list? Of course. Bro, the F Magic 30 was a huge signal that they intended to come after the reserve list. And there's been a bunch of, like, there's been an exodus of old school players who are just like, yo, I'm not keeping all this old stuff now. Wizards is gunning for it. Like, that's straight up. They plan to gut the reserve list market as well, 100%. That's, that is their end goal. There's a bunch of reprint equity lying on the table and the fact that they made a promise 20 years ago to not cheat on their wife doesn't mean they don't want to fuck this 20 year old hottie cheerleader now bro that's the deal that's the deal they don't care i made i made a promise 20 years ago that don't mean nothing i want to fuck that's wizards so yeah magic 30 is gonna get the dickens bro <laughs> not magic 30 the reserve list is gonna get the dickens magic 30 is just the indicator they were gonna do it and that wonky counterspell secret layer stuff that they did as well is another indicator it's going down. It's going down. No master, you're not you're gonna have everybody in the world at that school with that with that plan, bro. That's a good one. <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of people. And then you can go bankrupt. Good luck with that. You're gonna need real magic. So yeah, I don't know, man. I'm interested in seeing how magic shakes out for the next five years, right? Because the last, the last five years or so has been like pillaging and cost cutting and seeing where they can squeeze as much as possible. And they're realizing their strategy is giving them diminishing returns now. It gave them a nice cash spike for the short term, but for the long term, it's not working. Craven, you messed up and started playing Command and Conquer again. Yo, I remember Command and Conquer from back in the day. That's like you got your little Tiberian miners and stuff, right? And is that the one with the nukes or was that spacecraft where you're just like in a rush to get the, the nukes set up so you can blast their bases and stuff? So yeah, they're they're definitely they're definitely reaping what they have sowed. Commander Masters shows just how far things got, right? It's emblematic of magic where their their current mentality. Commander is everything for magic and reprint sets have to be more expensive because of the reprints that are in them and stuff. Like they just have inherent value or something. And it's just yeah. they took a system that was working and they squeezed a bunch of extra money out of it but they broke the system so we're all kind of left going what have you guys done like how did you screw this up so badly you're, you're like you have a license to print money with magic and you're hosing it you're hosing it hard Hey, Craven, thanks for, thanks for the punchy punch sticker, buddy. Punch it, son. Yeah, my girl, any chance they'll print the second artwork for Plateau? Bro, if they, if they get to the point where they actually enact the, the, the reserve list reprinting, which feels like an inevitability and not over a long term, over a short term, they want money. Um, there's no reason you couldn't get like that Plateau in an alternate art side kind of treatment or something like that. Totally. Totally. Why wouldn't they want to use both? I'm accustomed to the revised plateau artwork as well. Gerthulu, yep. You're not the only one who misses when standard was the competitive format and the gateway to Magic the Gathering before. The big commander push. Wizards is really miscalculated, right? 
when they're just like, oh, the majority of our players are commander and whatever. And it's like, and how much do they drive sales and do everything else? Oh, we don't actually know 100%. Peterson, you think Ravnica Remastered will get more love? It's possible. It's definitely possible. Because Commander Masters, like, it's a pretty reviled set overall. It did very poorly. It got what it deserved, honestly. It's super greedy. It's a super greedy set. Wizards has been super greedy lately, right? Like, Aftermath, that way. Like, the, the choices that they're making are just blatantly skeezy. And it just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. Where you know they're just like, eh, we're pretty sure we can get away with it, so we're just going to do it to you. It's like, come on, guys. Come on. That's what happens when you're dealing with a corporation that's beholden to another corporation that's beholden to shareholders, so they constantly have to increase profits regardless of what that actually means in terms of any product that's delivered. It's not important to deliver a better product or a product of the same quality, What's important is to get money for the shareholders. Only money matters. It's pretty grim. Pretty grim. Oh, well. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? Just sit on the sidelines and see what's going down? Hope that things get better? That's all you can do, really. Continue to have fun playing. I mean, I'm having fun playing Chandelier. Having fun with my cube. I like adding new stuff to it. So for me, magic is fun even if what they're doing to the game so much ain't, right? Mountain Jam, yeah, I don't think they would put that kind of a statement on the reserve list. Them doing it that way would basically be the equivalent, right? Just says it's magic to use sleight of hand to rob you. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's all trickery. Gerthu, you got the sliver deck and that's all you wanted from magic for a while? Well, I guess it's got to feel good. It's got to feel good to have what you want and not be really worrying about anything else. I tend to always want more magic cards. I'm a greedy fiend for them. A fiend for more magic even even when I'm unhappy with the direction the company's taking. Still fiend for that magic, son. Still fiending for it. Looking forward to the Lost Caverns of Ixalan pre-release. That won't be too far from now. Next month. Got that next month. Got my birthday next month. That's going to be dope as well. Break stop. Got back into magic in 2021 and were astonished there were no constructed format tournaments at the LGS you were checking out played back in times for on cold snap before yeah bro if i'd got out of magic and w wasn't watching this all happen i also would have been floored if i walked in and was like okay so what kind of stuff do you have for me to hop in and play in a standard event tonight you got challenger decks or whatever and i'd be like oh we don't have standard events and i'd be like oh what what store does the standards standard stuff for friday night magics then doesn't everybody I'd be like nobody does anymore and i'd be like i don't understand and like, grab a commander deck and go, maybe you can find a pod of three other people to play with. And then just be like, okay, I have to leave now. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Break stop. You love sealed and draft? Yeah, the limited formats can be a lot of fun, bro. I like, uh, I like both of those as well. Blue Rose, you wish you could get Cold Snap remastered? Well, they, I mean, Cold... The thing is, when they do in the remastered sets, they're doing an entire block, right? And Cold Snap's not a block. It's, like, lumped in with, like, Ice Age and Alliances. So, I don't... Uh, I don't think uh, that's, like, something that they would end up doing, just remastering one set, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anything's possible now. 
before things were more predictable in the world of magic. Break stop, you literally asked the same question, which stores are playing standard and you got tumbleweeds. Yeah, so that would that would like floor me. That would floor me. Magic, magic now is in a lot of ways unrecognizable compared to what it was and stayed f as for the longest time. And Wizards has learned to their dismay that it was not the correct course of action. And that is clearly illustrated by the fact that they're now backtracking and going, we're bringing back what we got rid of. And on top of that, uh, we're extending standard out by 50%. So the increasing standard by a year is an admission of failure, obviously. And then backtracking and going, we're bringing back competitive events. We're bringing back coverage, all of it. I love that. With coverage, obviously, but it's like, you know it's not obvious, and that's why you have to put that in there, where it's just like, obviously we're going to do coverage, guys. It's not like before, where we just tried to like, like bury the Pro Tour and go, we don't need it. We don't need the Pro Tour. We don't need lore. Yeah, I know all the stuff that you had all along, yeah, that contributes to your success. It's not just unnecessary crap you can jettison and go, hey, why aren't we got, we changed what we're doing. We made it worse. Why aren't we getting the same or better results? It's, what? What? So yeah, I'll be curious to see what tomorrow brings. What tomorrow brings with the ban announcements. All that goodness. All of that goodness. Oh, I'm guessing it won't be much. I'm guessing it'll just be some unbannings to say that we're doing something, but... I expect more justifications for the one ring. Well, my friends, thanks for coming and hanging out. I have some things to attend to, so I've got to get going. We will reconvene tomorrow. But now the Chainsaw Man's coming, so run for your lives. Run, run. Run.